One man is dead, another woman recovering in the hospital behind me with serious wounds. You'll hear her remarkable survival story in just a moment. But first, the frantic hunt for the bear or bears before they might strike again. Wildlife crews are setting bear traps near the tents where the campers were attacked. This normally busy summer campground is closed for fear the bear or bears will come back for more. Lifelong camper Deb Friel was asleep in her tent when the animal tore its way in and bit her, crushing bones in her arm. To wake up to something crunching on your arm, I can't describe the feeling. The three separate attacks happened here at the Soda Butte campground, just about five miles from the northeast entrance to Yellowstone National Park. The campground is spotted with signs warning campers to store away food that might attract a hungry animal. As far as we can tell, these individuals did everything right at this campground. There were no food storage issues and we're just going to investigate the best that we can. And Officials estimate 125 grizzlies and 500 black bears roam the Yellowstone area at any given time. The odds of being injured are low, approximately 1 in 1.9 million. Still, it does happen. Just two years ago, in this very campground, this man was attacked as he slept in a tent. A young female grizzly was later captured. This morning, wildlife officers vowed they'll do everything they can to catch this one, too. We're investigating using various methods, hair samples, DNA, um, track size, things of that nature. Wildlife officers say if they do catch this bear, it will in fact be killed. Until then, that campground remains closed. Chris? With good readings. Ryan Owens, thank you very much. One of the survivors, Deb Friel, she's joining us now. As you just heard, she suffered a broken arm and laceration. She is okay. She's joining us from the hospital in Cody, Wyoming. Deb, good morning to you. How are you feeling? Good morning. Um, I'm glad to be alive. <laughs> I'm feeling good. I bet you are. I bet you are. So take yeah. us there. You're in the tent, kind of asleep. You was, say moments I before was, it happens, you hear it. Yeah, it was, it was a split second before I had been sound asleep. Uh, a split second before something just told me something was wrong. And I, I woke up and the bear bit down on me. I hadn't even moved and uh, bit down on my arm and I screamed and he bit down harder. I screamed some more and uh, he continued to bite and shake and I could hear my bones breaking. Um, and then uh, something in my head told me this wasn't working with this bear and uh, I decided that I was just gonna play dead and I went completely limp like a rag doll and uh, he after a few seconds, he loosened his grip and he left. Now help me with that. How did you have the presence of mind when something so violent is going on to relax and play dead? I didn't think I had a choice. It was, it was I think, survival instinct kicking in. And I had been thinking during this whole process, it, I know it, it doesn't seem like a long time, but your brain is firing. And it, to me, it seemed like a very long time. And I had a lot of time to think about what I needed to do. Um, it, it just, I don't know. And it was something that I had remembered reading and, and you know, to play dead. And I remember the uh, attacks in 68 that mm. happened uh, in Yellowstone. And that was one of the points I think I got, I think I got it from that book, but also even, you know, I reread the literature. It was in my mind. There was two things to try, hit them in the nose or play dead. But you couldn't do that because he I had, had your no, arm. And it's an interesting point. He had point. my arm and, and, he was, and he was behind me. I couldn't bend over to reach him. So. And the other interesting aspect here is you said that you felt that the bear might have been hunting you. And interestingly, your, brother, your husband, Bill, didn't even hear what was going on until this all was done. What do you make of that? Right. Well, the, during the whole attack, that bear was very quiet. Um, it didn't growl, didn't make any noise. Um, I don't know. I, I felt like prey. <laughs> wow. I thought, I thought that's what was going to happen. So. Well, it helped. And, and I it, didn't, and I don't think it's a normal bear. Well, it attacked. We know that for sure. And we also yeah. know that even though this just happened, you're saying 
you'll go back into the wilderness, you'll go back into a tent, you'll camp again. Yeah, yeah. I might think twice about Soda Butte. <laughs> but we'll see. Yeah. Well, yeah. Deb, thank you so much. It's let us let you get back to healing. And it's great to meet you okay. this way. I'm glad you're okay. Thank you.